the 2020 year, obviously far beyond sports was just a topsy turvy all over the place year, but specifically Gamecocks football in 2020, you know, this time last year was a very, very different outlook. You know, we were going into Will Muschamp's fifth season and, you know, I, I thought the interesting storyline and narrative going in that season, Phil, was, oh, you know, this is going to be a gimme year. It's a total wash. It's a mulligan. You know, as long as must champ and the Gamecocks, as long as they just don't lose every single game, you know what I mean? There's no way they're going to get rid of him. They're going to give him that 2021 season. And, of course, not only for South Carolina was that not true, but we saw it at Auburn. We saw it at Tennessee. We saw it at Vanderbilt. I mean, heck, we saw – you know, as many coaching changes, if not more, last year than I think you'd see in a regular season. How surprised, if at all surprised, were you to see Sal kind of move on from Will Muschamp to pay the buyout, especially? Because, of course, that was the big thing at all. You know, the economic ramifications, and no, there's no way they'll pay that money and pull the trigger. And, you know, Sal kind of higher ups and their boosters were more than more than welcome to do that, more, more than willing to do that, I should say. But how surprised were you, if at all, that South Carolina moved on from Will Muschamp last season in the fashion in which they did so? Well, I was, first of all, very surprised that it didn't work for Will Muschamp. Um, when he was hired, and I know he wasn't the first guy on the list when they were looking to uh, hire a new coach, but when they ended up with him, I thought it was a good hire. You know, here's a guy, okay, he was the number one uh, assistant coach in the country. He was the coach in waiting at Texas, and he goes to Florida, has a really good second season, but an overall run there that wasn't good enough for them. And so they let him go, and uh, he goes to Auburn. He gets a chance to come back to the SEC as a head coach after one year. That doesn't happen very often. And I thought, this guy is – um. You know, he's got a terrific track record as an assistant coach, and he did win 28 out of, what, 59 games? At, no, 49. 28 and 21, I think it was, at Florida, which at South Carolina would be very acceptable. And he seemed passionate about the job. He seemed uh, extremely energetic, uh, seemed uh, very much understanding about the recruiting side of things, very, very uh, active uh, in doing that. So – I thought they'd hit on a, on a good hire there. And I, I thought this guy is going to get it done young. He's, and also he's going to be very appreciative of the fact that South Carolina gave him a chance. He's not going to be using South Carolina as a stepping stone. He should look at South Carolina as a, as a home. And, you know, in the way he purchased his property and his kids were playing in the community and his wife was opening businesses and all that, it looked that way, you know, they, they looked in great. So, um, you know, unfortunately, after that second year, that was really good for them. You know, it, it went south for a variety of reasons, as we know. I, I think more than anything else, of course, you look at the injury to Jake Bentley and having to force Ryan Helinski in as a starting quarterback. And he did a, you know, a pretty fair job uh, for a, a true freshman stepping into the SEC. But not having Jake Bentley you know, just set them back tremendously. Say what you want about Jake. I mean, he had proven that he could win in the SEC, and he was your leader, an older guy and all that. That hurt uh, terribly. And, of course, the next year, uh, 2020, uh, they just weren't ready for, for anything, you know. Yeah. So I, I was um, – more than anything else, I was just surprised that it didn't work mm -hmm. for Muschamp because I saw how hard they worked in recruiting, uh, how he, you know, always talked about it. And his uh, – his um, attitude was not like what Beamer is. Beamer is always bright light, uh, glass half full, energy, high energy, praise, praise, praise. Uh, very similar to what Dabo Sweeney did when he took over at Clemson. Everything is right. great. We got the greatest this, greatest that. You know, Muschamp wasn't that way. Mm. I don't think he was that real touchy-feely, emotional kind of guy. <laughs> that Beamer is, you know, but that's okay. Well, he was, and, and people say he was tough with the media. And I mean, I, I you don't have to expand on that if you don't want to, but it uh, felt very pre-canned in conferences. He was very vague about injuries and just everything. Yeah. It was very, he had his it was, way. Right. He, he had his way about things. Very was, Nick Saban-esque, very yeah. Nick Saban-esque. Well, that's where he, which you know, most of the Nick Sabanites he, he, have, have been that way. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, again, he is what he is. You right. ask a question of a coach. I mean, you expect uh, – you, you better be prepared for the answer, you know, that you may not ex 
expect and, and how to and, and deal with it, you know, don't, <clears throat> and don't get upset and don't take it personally. Um, you know, I had exchanges with Muschamp, nothing, nothing real, real bad. Um, yeah. But he was just that kind of guy. And he's like, I asked him a question. They beat Louisiana Tech in 2019. Oh, yeah. At home. Remember that? Oh, they yeah. Beat yeah. Louisiana Tech. 16 to 16 to 15 yeah. or 17, yeah. 16, 17, 16. Well, and it made them it yeah. made them three and one. Right. Versus uh, they would have been what? Two and two. Yeah. And so my question was a real softball question after the game. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting way back in the back and I raised my hand and I said, um, hey, you know, you won the game. You're three and one. You know, how does that feel to you? Three and one versus two and two. How much better is that? You know, and I'm wearing a peach shirt. And his response was his response was nice orange shirt, Tiger Phil. And I said, no, it's peach. It's not orange. It's peach. And he goes, OK, well, nice peach shirt. Um, but my point is, you know, right. he just wanted to take a little, a little stab at me there, which was okay. You know, yeah. you roll with it. Yeah. Um, and, it, and then he answered the question. So he, he was, he was fine, you know, from that standpoint, um, did I, you know, the, the, the buyout and the decision to make the change. I mean, look, um, everything was so bad in, in 2020 with the COVID mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I thought when he hired Mike Bobo that that was going to be the answer. But, yeah. uh, you know, they, you know, Colin, uh, Colin Hill was a nice quarterback. He was a nice fill-in guy, but he wasn't going to win big in the SEC. Right. Apparently, uh, you know, they didn't like Kalinsky for whatever reason, or Bobo didn't like Kalinsky for whatever reason. He never got a chance to play. You know, it was just a mess there at quarterback. And, and again, you go into the SEC without a, a true – uh, performer at quarterback, you're you're lost in the woods, right. basically. Um, so, I think it was probably if they had the money, which they ended up putting together, it was probably the the, the smart thing to do because the mm-hmm. the the fans seemed to have been souring uh, very strongly on Muschamp and everything that was going on. So you bring in a guy who's young, enthusiastic, um, a lot like the Dabo Sweeney model, and you cut him loose. And you let him do his thing. And it sounds like a Beamer has got a very good plan, a very good approach to things. Now, their recruiting is going uh, well. And all this smells good and feels good until we mm-hmm. get to the season and we see what he's able to do there. And the honeymoon uh, the phase. Lo- well, the honeymoon if the losses phase. start to pile up, then we know what will happen. But it's only year one and you got to give right. him some time. But I think he's got some good players coming in if they mm-hmm. just give him a chance. Yeah. 